Are you guys ready to hear from God's word today? Our God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword. I believe it is the solution to darkness. I believe when God speaks through his heavenly word, I believe he speaks to our, to our souls. And all across this house, I want you to open your hearts and minds to God's word. And in fact, this is going to seem like your Catholic faith has come back to you a little bit. But I want you to stand in the reverence of God's word, please. Let's look at the word of the screen. We're going to read this together one last time in this series. Are you ready? Let's say it together. Love is what? Patient. Love is kind. It is not envy. It is not boast. It is not proud. It is not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered and keeps no records of wrongs. But love is patient. If we could go back one. <laughs> love is what? Patient. Love is kind. It is not envy. I, wait, we just read this. My bad. You're the amazing, Joe. All right. This is the right one. Get him disoriented here. Love is not delight in evil, but what? Rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, right? Because why? Love never fails. Let's say it together. Love never fails. Last time. Love never fails. Come on. Can we just give a hand for God's love? All right, now you may sit down, and I promise you, you won't have to get back up to the end of service. And some of you are like, I was just starting to wheel my way into a net. <laughs> not today, devil, you're not. So you, you start to sleep in here, I'm going to be calling you out. Let's side, swarm. I'm going to stick the ushers on you, and I'm going to swarm on you, and do the spirit of slap upon you. Wake thy up. I even use a little thy there. You like that? A little thy? Look, one old school King James on you. Hmm. I'm going to give you the message right now, just in case you want to take a nap. You ready? Here it is. Love intentionally without return with the right currency. Now. In fact, let's say it together. Say now. 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 Very good. And let love begin with you. Turn your neighbor and say you. you. And turn your second choice and say definitely you. See, when I first met this girl, she was wearing a white dress like it was like Wayne's World 2 just came out. If you don't know what that is, let me just tell you, it was a really cool movie back in the day. And, and Heather Locklear was wearing a white dress in that movie. And Wayne looked at her and said, Heather, be thy name. And she will be mine. And when I first saw my soon-to-be girlfriend, soon-to-be wife, she's wearing a white dress in chapel. I looked at her from distance. I pointed at the fullback because I was a punter back then. I go, she will be mine. Oh, Yes. She will be mine. And I, I did things I never did with girls. Like, I wrote notes. I wrote poetry. And they, and they asked her out the one night. I, I took 11 roses and wrote it up to her window cell. And I was holding the last one at the very bottom. This is how stupid the love I was. And I memorized the Romeo and Juliet balcony speech. I said, just as God, I never felt the womb would stop beyond the window breaks. And I went through the whole thing, like, you know, can't the sun, but rise, fair sun. I really said these things and kill the envious moon, because there is no maiden no far and fair than she. And I shortened it really up, for, up to show you how stupid in love I was. But Will Shakespeare, uh, Shakespeare, Billy Shakespeare actually said another thing, too. Oh, Billy. <laughs> to be or not to be, right? That is the question. You have to say it like that. You can't say to be or not to be. To be or not to be, that is the question. So are you or are you not? You either are or you are not. That's what it really means. Either you are an agent of God's love church family or you're not. And this is even spookier like we talked about last week. If you do not love you do not know God because God is love. Why do these churches always talk about God's love? Because we're talking about God. Oh, that makes sense. So anytime someone gets in your face and gets all riled up and says to church, all they do is talk about God's love. You look at him and say, I think he's 
that God is love. That's why we talk about it. Because there is no boundary, no wall. He will not tear down. There's nothing that you could ever do, can do, or will eventually do can separate you from the love of God. Because it never fails. Never fails. And it always wins. In 2 Timothy, we are like, why are we experiencing this as a culture? I'm like, why to be or not to be? Why are we loving? Why, why are we hating each other? Why is elections separating church members every year? And we take politics and we mix it with religion. Why do we get all holier than now and thinking that, sorry about the front row for spitting on you, but how do we get all holier than now thinking that, oh, I can't believe this person dresses that or wears that, acts that way, posts that. Let me be the first person to kick the pedestal off from underneath you and redo this. But mark this, this is why. There will be terrible times in the last days. And we all say what? Amen, because we are in the last days. We know we are. If you don't think we're in the last days, I mean, come on. The Browns made the playoffs. <laughs> the Lions made the NFC Championship game. That should make you repent, period. Because that is creepy. They almost made the Super Bowl. Man, I was on my knees praying. I'm like, God, don't take us now. And, and listen, this is what he says. Paul writes to Timothy, he goes, people will be lovers of themselves. So mark this, whoa, what do you mean lovers of yourself? They'll have all these weird pages with pictures of themselves going this. <laughs> and they'll be doing this. TikTok dances, can't even do one. They'll be lovers of money. Oh. God, it's like he's reading the mail right now, man. Come on, God, keep on reading it. They will be boastful and proud. I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not going to talk to that person. I'm not going back to that church. Because a preacher wear white tennies, they're a gift from my wife joking around they'll be abusive kind of narcissistic yeah they will disobey their parents seen that one coming they'll be ungrateful definitely from the love of god unholy yep how can you sum it up paul without love Without love, they'll be unforgiving. They'll be slanders. Even though they speak in tongues, they will still gossip in English. Without self-control, whew, nobody else got into salting crackers or cold fish last night. It's just me. They'll be brutal. They will bully people no matter what they say about Jesus. They'll be not lovers of good. They'll be treasure, treasures. He goes, no, they'll be rash, conceited, oh, lovers of pleasure. And here's the key element. Rather than, let's say it together, rather than lovers of who? God. In other words, in the last days, they will choose the Netflix over God's word. They will choose face crack or Insta crack over God's word. And they will look at you and they will say, I don't have time to read God's word. But you watch two hours of the news every day. And China is taking over the world. Yes, I know, there's Dollar Trees everywhere. And now it's, yeah, it's $1.25 now. But he goes on even further. He goes, it gets worse. Having a form of godliness that is denying it's power. In other words, they will say they believe in God, they'll host about God, but they don't believe in the power of the living God. Yep. And have not, he goes, what do, you, what, do you, what do you want us to do? Have nothing to do with these people. If they get slanderous, drop them like it's hot. Because if you want to know where your life is going to be in five years, show me the people you're hanging out with. I guarantee you'll be exactly like that. So why is this all happening? Number one, I believe this is our culture. Yep, we're in the last days. Absolutely. Our culture is, what is, what is culture? It's the sum of what we allow 
and what we create because more is caught than is taught. Son, don't do that, but watch me do it too. Nobody else is guilty. Son, don't, don't, don't eat these Oreos, but I will eat them. My children know, don't leave anything out around 11 p.m. If it's crunchy, specifically Cape Cod chips, you can't leave any of those grasshopper mint de de devil wor worshiping cookies. Can't leave those out. They will be mine. Oh, yes, they will be mine. Because this is why we, we're allowing things, though, other ways in our culture, too, as well. We allow things in our house that we know we shouldn't allow, but we still do it because we like it. Because we're lovers of pleasure rather than being lovers of God. And you know what our culture is really bad about right now? We are now, we want it now, we want it fast, I mean, we want to be happy. We want everything now, and if we don't get it now, I'm going somewhere else. Nobody else. I will never go back to that restaurant. They're too slow. And we want it fast. We don't want to wait to raise more money. We want, we want it now. We want it now. And we want to be happy. And uh, let me just debunk the happy thing in structure. This can, this is, happiness is an emotional choice. And this is the scary thing about it. We have, <laughs> we choose 95% of our decisions are based on our emotions. Do you know that? Woo. Gentlemen, look straight. Don't look at your neighbor. If you're married, don't look at, don't look. Stay strong. But culture has shifted us to make us unhappy and, and, and many times because we don't have what we want to have or what they have. And what happens is then we become unhappy and it's not happening fast enough. And that's why we have gone to become lovers of pleasure over being lovers of God. And also our emotional boundaries as a system are really jacked up. I'm going to speed up now, so stay with me. In other words, we get these guilt that I owe you something or I have to pay you back or you bought a bigger Christmas gift than I did. So I'm gonna put myself in bigger debt to get you a bigger gift because that's what we do as followers of Jesus and lovers of God is we are competitive gift givers, right? Or I owe you that, right? In other words, anger says that you owe me something. That's a new thing in culture, not really. It's been happening for several years now. Everybody owes everybody everything. Government, please give me, because you owe me. And it's funny, it's people are like, this is free money. I'm like, no, government never gives out free money, brother. <laughs> Nothing in life is free. Nope. <sighs> Don't buy it. That's a credit card. And life's only fair at the fairground because they call it the fairground. And also we get this thing, agreed, I owe myself like this thing. I, I really should give this to myself. And if I stepped on your, your toe yet, I'm trying, I'm trying. Just stick them out a little further. Uh, jealousy. Life owes me this because of what's happening in my life, I'm owed this. And what happens is we get this whole structure, and I showed it to you last week, this huge pyramid structure here. This is not an MLM, okay, multi-level marketing. This is an actual Maslow hierarchy of needs. And we, in other words, if you feel safe, your physiological needs are taken care of, you have food and water, which you live in America, so you're already in the top 6% in the world of affluency. So you're already there. You need to get the self-actualization to one day find yourself and find out who you're supposed to be or at least be emotionally stable enough to be a human being. It's called emotional maturity. And what happens is when we get love jacked up, when we mess up love and we learn to love by being loved and when we're loved, we are hurt, we are damaged and, and we, are, we feel damaged and we can't get our self-esteem and become who God has meant us to be, let alone find emotional maturity. That's why you see so many people saying, well, I'm never going back. I'm never doing that person. I'm never hanging out with that person ever again. Because, or I will never say I'm sorry. That's one of my biggest pet peeves, by the way. For the love of Moses, say you're sorry, gentlemen. If you're a dad in this room or a husband in this room, if you don't say you're sorry, I will slap you. <laughs> because be a man. Swallow your pride. Let's admit when you're wrong. Because here's what's going to happen in our generation is this, people. If you, it, is we need to have a shift in our culture because we have a choice. There's hope because you decide. In fact, turn your neighbor and say, you decide. 
You really do. You actually decide what happens next. And in fact, we find this part in scripture. This is one of my favorite passages because it makes me laugh. You say, why? The Bible makes you laugh. Yes, because I'm a mama's boy. Anybody else here a mama's boy in here? Come on, just admit it. Just raise your hand. I'm a mama's boy. It's okay. It's nothing wrong with that. You want to know why? I was the person that got to drive her car. No one else was allowed to touch it. I needed new jeans. She'd go out and buy them for me. No other kid got that. They had to buy their own. Why? Because I'm a mama's boy. And I, I, every time I come in town, she makes chicken pakintosh. That's a Hungarian dish, Austrian dish, really good. She makes the greatest pies in the world. And my wife's okay with that. Because my wife is also a Norma Bates, too. She is a, you'll get that joke later. She, she, my son is a mama's boy, and it's nothing wrong with that. A lot of love. And by the way, if my body is somewhere located in the outskirts of the Everglades, you know who did it? I'm going to move on to read God's word. Here we go. On the third day, this wedding took place again. I love this. Uh, Jesus' mother was there. Who was there? Jesus' mom. All right. And Jesus and his disciples have also been invited to a wedding. So they're going to this wedding. They're going to some wedding crashing going on here. And then when the wine was gone, when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, it's not on the screen, but it's not here in my notes. So let me read it to you. We have no wine. And I love what Jesus says first, because this, this should encourage you guys if you ever put your, your foot in your mouth. Because Jesus kind of says something that you should never say to your mother. But it's in scripture. So we're going to read it anyways. Woman. <laughs> Woman. No, no, he didn't say that. Woman, why? Why do you involve me? Have you ever thought this? Jesus is sitting back going, woman, why are you involving me? Because I'm your mother. (laughs) Notice this tone. Why are you even involving me? Jesus replied. My hour has not come yet. Yet come. My hour has not yet come. I love this part of scripture. But what happened next? His mama said, Nobody else, come on. Nine years in, Adam said, Mama said, <laughs> Nobody else, women are the devil. No, I just, <laughs> football of the devil. All right, so, anyways, back to scripture. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Did anybody just catch scripture? Jesus didn't say yes. <laughs> he doesn't even like. He doesn't even say, hold on, wait, wait for a minute. No, his mom just goes, hold on. Do whatever he tells you. <laughs> Talk about one sassy woman. <laughs> she gets things done the way she wants it. And it's very obvious he doesn't, she doesn't ask him, but also Jesus has probably done this before. Have you thought about this for a moment? How does she know? I wonder if John heard stories about that. Nobody ever wondered if John was hanging out with Mary at the end there. He's heard weird stories about this. But that's who's writing this. Why? Because he was there. Nearby stood six stone water jars. The kind, and hear this, I underlined it for a reason, used by the Jews, but for what? Ceremonial what does Jesus do later, by the way? He washes the... All right, kicks in room. There you go. That was for you. Each holding 20 to 30 gallons. That's a keg of wine. That's a whole lot of wine. So if you did a quick math, what's six times 20 people? 120. That's a whole lot of vino. And then he goes on even further. And, and, and listen, he says to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them with, to the brim. I love this because they didn't need to just fill them. They filled them to what? The brim. <laughs> so he told them, now just draw some. Draw some. Draw some out and take it to who? The master at the banquet. Can you imagine being that day, there that day and being that servant and seeing what you saw? Because sometimes you can't unsee what you see, right? You can't. 
takes it to the master. I love this next part of scripture. They did so, and the master banker tasted the water that had been turned into wine, right? And he did not realize where it came from, right? Where it come from. And through the servants who had drawn the, who had drawn the water knew, though. They knew, but he didn't know. Can you imagine them dropping it off? And they're like, here, taste some. And Jesus' mother's over there going, mm-hmm, yeah, that's my boy. And the master calls the bridegroom aside. He says, everyone brings out the choice wine first. And his culture back then, they didn't bring out the, bring out the good, good stuff last because everybody was already gone by then. They brought it out first because they always gave their best first. And then the cheaper wine is after guests of how he had too much to drink. That's when you bring that stuff out. But you, you have saved, saved, let's say this together, the what? Best for now. Hold on, hold on one second. We're going to say this phrase one more time. The what? Best. Keep that in your brain. Store it. I'm going to come back to it. And what Jesus did here in Galilee, right, was the first of what? The signs for which he revealed his glory. He did it for his who? His mama. What if, what if we did what Jesus did? You're like, I oh, will turn water and wine. Some of you guys, you know, you're, this is your first time at church. You're like, oh, cool, let's do that. <laughs> no, 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 no. The water and the wine thing, that was just a thing. I want you to concentrate on the act of love. The act of love of doing a miracle even before it was time, he still did it. Even though he was inconvenienced, he what? Still did it. Because Why? He loved his mama. But let me get back to this question. To be or not to be, that is the question. Everyone in this room, whether you think it's the right time or not the right time, or, or, or maybe, it's, maybe you'll love them later. Maybe you'll forgive them later. Maybe, maybe, maybe when the election's over, we can still talk. What if we started now? So what now? In fact, turn to your neighbor and say, what now? Good Lord, man. I mean, we've we, we been through a lot of things here this morning. I got a couple minutes. Let me land a plane here. Number one is this. We need to create a love culture. What does that mean? We need to love when we're inconvenienced, love filled by Jesus, not by our own anger or our own flesh. Yeah, there'll be times we will snap. That's what family does. And if your family's like my family, we yell. Nobody else is a yelling family. When I was growing up, it literally sounded like we were a bunch of Italianos. We don't, hey, hey. everybody was screaming. I'm like, that's just the way we talk. Nobody else. They're like, you're intense. I'm like, you didn't see my sisters. They're more intense. And this is the other thing I wanted to say. Yes, love filled by Jesus because I believe the love that you possess and you've been taught is not the love of God. Uh, love is patient, love is kind, it's not heavy, it's not boast. All those things are the basics of God's love and they're so hard to re- be reproduced into culture nowadays because the, we are so in love with our own selves and our own pleasures rather than being in the love of God. It's so difficult. And you need to love with the right currency. What do you mean? Well, I do this so many times in my life to my wife. I buy her things that I would like. <laughs> Why not? I mean, I mean, I hate to expose it. I'm already going to be dead tomorrow. Okay, like, not just joking. She loves me. She's not going to kill me. I don't think so. But uh, I love you, honey. She's going to kill me later. But no, I learned to love her with the right currency. When I learned, it was I was so stupid as a stupid guy. I was like, okay, George. 
You know, like, I would like, uh, I was like, hey, babe, let's watch a movie. Yeah. She's like, okay. Uh, you around my wife, like, at 10 seconds, she hates sitting down. She hates sitting still. She, she'd rather work than watch a movie with me because that's her personality, but she does it because she loves me. But she makes sure it's a really good action movie or a really horrible, I think, chick flick. <laughs> no, nowadays, I, I know what it's like. Guys, let me, if newlyweds in the room, listen for a second. You will get more love if you wash the dishes than buying her, I don't know, I used to say CD, buying her music. She does not probably care that much about the new technological iPhone or Apple Watch as much as probably as you do. Like buying your new spouse a PlayStation is not wise. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> I'll go down that trail. But one of the things you could do is I put the website up here. I know I didn't, I didn't put one of those little fancy squared things so you could take a picture of it. Just take the quiz. Figure out what your love language is and your love language, and then communicate, this is my love language. And guys, I, and ladies inside your majority of guys in the room, if you're married, it's physical, okay? It's not hard. We're not hard to read. But we can't read you. So help a brother out. <laughs> Take the quiz for the love of all that is holy. <laughs> and it's like... I, when I figured this out, I started folding towels, doing laundry. I, I, I was like, this is a miracle. Because I'm making love with the right things. And also, this is, we need to start creating emotional boundaries as well. Yes, create a cult, love culture, but also emotional boundaries. What do you mean? When you start to feel guilty, you need to realize that God does forgive. Guilt and shame are of the enemy. They are not of God, Period. Nowhere in scripture it says Jesus poured some guilt on him. Jesus shamed him. No. Jesus said, where are your accusers? Get up and go sin, go sin no more. Right? Jesus says, I forgive you. He forgave sins and said, which is harder, to forgive or heal? What if we do that, realize that you need to stop feeling guilty for your sins that God has already forgiven. Otherwise, you're saying that his blood spilled on Calvary was not good enough. Yeah. Number two, anger. Christ is patient with you, so you should be patient with others. When you lose your top and your anger, do not sin. Greed. Solutions, give. In fact, turn to your neighbor and say, give. Yeah. If you're a greedy person in this room and you know who you are, if you don't know who you are, spouse, give a nice, good, sharp elbow. <laughs> is this. The only way to break greed is Generosity. My wife taught me this many times in the early part of our marriage, and I still cringe sometimes when she takes the card and says, I'm going to go bless somebody. But listen, you, it'll, it'll conquer the greedy soul inside of you. you need, in jealousy, this is what it, another thing is culture. And I, again, I got to wrap this up. Jealousy. If you're jealous of somebody on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, start a grat gratitude jar. Put a jar and force yourself for the next 30 days to put what you're thankful for. The first five or six days are really easy. I'm thankful for my dog. Thank you for the cat. Or if, you, if you have the cat, you shouldn't allow the devil in your house anyways. But anyways, <laughs> I, I'm thankful for my hand. Whatever you're thankful for, your car. But day seven to 14, it starts to get serious. And you, you have to actually say what you're really thankful for. Why is this? Because I believe if we begin to love intentionally without the... With the right, potentially without return, with the, legitimately the right currency now. I know it's a compact sentence. It probably makes no sense in English, but let me explain it to you in Mike English. If you begin to love intentionally without return and not expect anything back, but when you begin to use the right currency now, it's going to change everything in your life. And that's for somebody out there. They, 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 I believe that you've been loving with the wrong currency for so long because that's the way you were taught. Because more is caught than is taught. But you just need to let it start with you. Don't wait for the other person to come back and go, oh, I'm so sorry. You lead with love first. Say you're sorry first. 
This is hard. I had to say sorry to somebody this week. I didn't want to say sorry to you. I, I hated it. I was sending a text out. And me, me. That's how frustrated I was. I texted him. didn't even call him. I'm sorry. I lost my temper. He forgave me. I didn't need to say it. I had every right to be angry. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even justifying it because I'm a mama's boy. But I'm telling you the truth. But I, I believe it starts with me. It also starts with you. One of my favorite writers, Mark Batterson, great books. He said this, grace is loving people for who they are, where they are. Who, who they are, where they are. It's loving people before they change, not just after they change. That's love. Not when you arrive, we'll love you the way you are. We're going to love you like God loves you, yeah. even though. You don't have to behave before you belong here. You belong long before you behave. I mean, goodness, look at me. <laughs> I need Jesus too. But God knows who you are and he loves you for who you are. He loves you even though where you're at right now is not the greatest. He still loves you. And guess what? His love never fails. In fact, this last part of scripture, this last slide, greater love than this. Has no one than this, right? Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for his friends. Like, why would you bring this up? Because that's the greatest love. Because the greatest act of love was when someone didn't, was not forced to get off his throne. He chose to get off his throne, come down to earth, become a baby, lived 30, 30 years, 33 years, and gave his life for us. That was love. Love wasn't a worship song from heaven. It was given his only son to die for you, for your mistakes, for the things you feel guilty for, for the things that I had to ask forgiveness for. That's love. In fact, all across this house, will you do me the privilege and honor? Could you just close your eyes? And while you're doing that, if there's anybody in this room, you just need the love of God. You need forgiveness for your sins. And trust me, I say this prayer every day. Sometimes a couple times a day feels like, and you say, well, that's, no, Scripture says, if you ask, you shall receive. Seek, you will find. Knock, and the door will be answered for you. If you just simply just got to ask, and he will forgive, and he will love, he will guide you through whatever you're going through. That is his promise. And he is faithful to forgive those sins. It also says, go and sin no more, but we'll talk about that in a moment. All across this house, if you need Jesus and you need forgiveness for your sins, that's you. Nobody's looking around. Just say, Pastor Mike, that's me. Raise your hand and say, I need Jesus. I see you. You know how long? Because I need him too. And in fact, all those people raising their hands. <laughs> Praise God, there's like four or five of you already. Six, come on. Can we just say this prayer together as a body of believers? Let's say, Jesus, Jesus. come inside of my life. Jesus. Forgive me for my sin. I believe in you. I believe you did die for those sins. And because of your love, I believe and choose to follow you as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we celebrate these life changes together? Come on. Can we get loud for life change in this room? Can we get loud for forgiveness? In fact, could you stand with me across this house? I told you, it was last time. I'm done. You know what's not done? God's not done with you. He's gonna keep on blessing you and working you through and walking you through whatever you're going through. Because honestly, I'm that person. God's guided me through so much and he's gonna guide you through whatever you're going through because he is our shepherd. That's why they relate that to him. 
Man of God. And if you said yes to Jesus today, I just want to challenge you. Just text yes SC to 97,000. Or just fill out the card in front of you and say, I said yes to Jesus. You can just leave it on your chair. But we want to coach you towards Christ like maturity. Because this is what I believe the five people you surround yourself with, you become in five years by default. So if you intentionally choose Jesus and you intentionally choose to be at church, you're intentionally choosing a better life already. It's by showing up. So let me bless you right now. Let me pray a prayer of blessing and benediction over you guys. And let's walk out of this room full of God's love because his love never fails. Heavenly Father, right now, I put a special blessing upon business owners in this room. This will be your best year ever. This will be the year where transformation, creativity comes and governs your life because God has blessed your life. Boys, this will be your year of promotion. This will be the year, that, honestly, of prosperity. A year where God is gonna put you in places and let you harvest in places that you did not plant. And we praise you, Jesus, for your life transformation power. Parents, this will be your best year of parenting ever. You'll have years of peace. Retirees, this will be the year of joy and celebration because you don't have to go to work no more. We praise you, Jesus. And we ask you bless every single person in this room. Guide and direct them always as our great shepherd. And all of God's saints say what? Amen. God bless you. Come on, let's give a hand for Jesus and go out in love.